Okay, he's being nice today. Be nice. Be nice. Good boy. He's got one thing on his mind, and it ain't flogging me. <laughs> it's not flogging me. It's July 4th. I'm trying to hurry because I told Larry that I would come pick him up and bring him to the farm. He's been at the nursing home for a month now, so he's had physical therapy every single day, including most weekends um, for a month. So the therapist told me that he's gotten real strong. Also, we purchased him a, uh, what's it called? A concentrator. A concentrator is oxygen that you can carry with you and it's a continuous, it continuously, continuously builds oxygen so it doesn't run out like a bottle. It's a little bit lighter than what he's used to. Uh, carrying around an oxygen tank for Larry was a nightmare. He's just not strong enough. So he was not able to do a lot of walking because he couldn't carry the tank. So we decided to purchase him this concentrator. Well, the problem is with the concentrator, it's not a continuous flow, it's a pulsinator, meaning the only time it works is when he breathes through his nose. Well, Larry was breathing through his mouth when he walked. So he wasn't getting any oxygen and his oxygen was dropped. So in therapy, they've had to teach him how to close his mouth and breathe through his nose. And so they've really been working hard with him so that he can gain stronger strength by walking around. And I'm told he's finally accomplished this. So I'm trying to hurry let animals out. It's 6.30 in the morning. Larry's nursing home is an hour away from me. So I've got to let these animals out and leave here by 6.30 in order to be picking him up at 7.30. And I'm trying to hurry and have him here all day. While Shane's at work, I was, Larry's favorite thing that I cook, he loves to grill out hamburgers. So today, we're going to grill out hamburgers and enjoy the 4th of July. Last April, I traveled to Ohio to meet Kambach. Kambach is a sponsor of mine, and uh, I use all their feed. Well, when I went there, I met with a lot of the nutritionists to talk about the correct nutrition for my animals because that's something that I lacked in education. So I went and really sat down with all of them to learn about the nutrition and the proper care of my animals. Well, when we were talking about chickens, I, when it comes to chickens, I'm very confident. I know a lot about chickens. But they taught me that if rat poop gets in your chicken chicken feed from them going to go in I say I can't talk if rat if the chickens eat rat poop let's just put it that way um, salmonella can get in the eggs and cause problems well, the last thing I want to do is have salmonella in my eggs so they suggested that I put my feeder inside the coop so rats don't get in it well let me show you what's happening. In this coop, you see the roosting bar? There's two roosting bars. So there's nowhere to put this that droppings do not get on this feeder. And my feeder is absolutely disgusting, but I guess at least the rats are not getting in there and it's not causing salmonella. These crazy birds keep laying eggs everywhere but the nesting box. But you see how poop gets up there from them roosting on this bar? This drives me nuts. I saw that the baby turkeys are low on feed. And the feed for the baby turkeys is in where the rabbits go. 
Now I gotta go all the way back up to the education center to get turkey feed and put it out. I have about 10 minutes before I have to leave the house in order to pick up Larry on time. Seems like I'm not an on time kind of girl because of having a farm. <laughs> when you have a farm, all kinds of things can happen. It's hard to get out the door. I always talk about it's harder to raise animals than it is having two year olds. You know, having two year olds is hard to get out the door because you got to pack everything under the sun. And the animals not necessarily pack everything, but you have to make sure that everyone has enough water and feed to get you through until you get back. I'm a bit worried about Larry coming to the house. I'm afraid he might get depressed for not living here anymore. But his doctor recommend him stay at the nursing home because he needs 24 hour nursing care. And unfortunately, in Larry's head, he doesn't understand, because he has dementia, he doesn't understand how much he's gone downhill in the past year, really since he's gotten cancer. He's not really understanding that he's off balance and he's dizzy and he's having trouble breathing and things like that. He's not quite understanding. And oftentimes the nurses tell me that they're having a hard time keeping the oxygen on him because he keeps taking it off. So people have to be with him at all times to make sure that his oxygen is not dropping low. You may know this, but Oxygen dropping low can cause brain damage. So it's something that they have to monitor at all times. I'm getting the turkey feed. They have to monitor at all times to make sure that he is staying safe with his breathing. All right, I got the turkey feed. And now we'll go out here and make sure these baby turkeys have feed before I go get him. Oh, I just remembered. I need to put out water for him because their water, could, they keep roosting on the top of their water handle and poop is getting all in the water and all over the water container and I'm having a hard time keeping that clean. So I need to go clean that before I go. Got that all filled up. These turkeys are getting much larger too. Turkeys grow so fast. So now I just gotta get the water and get it all cleaned up. Now they have clean water and they have food and they should be good. Everybody's been fed. Everyone has water. So now it's off to get Larry. I'm a traveling spirit. I've seen many shows. From the West Pacific to the island of Kenya They treat me like a son anywhere I go And even though no one can tell I still feel that I'm alone I'm alone, I'm alone, I'm alone Leave me stranded, I know how to handle it all Just got back from taking Larry home and now I came out here and I cleaned the water containers. I just wanna let you know that the duck, the new duck that I got, I named him Sharpie. He just looks like a Sharpie, I don't know. So I named him that, he's doing really well, he's adjusted well, he gets along with everybody and he's learned to put himself to bed at night. In Alabama, the heat index has been like 105. It's just been miserably hot. So oftentimes throughout the day, I take the water hose out there and just spray off the animals. And you can tell they're like in heaven when I'm spraying them. As soon as I start spraying one, other ones come to get sprayed. And 
as you can tell, Hey Mickey and Tater Bug, oh my goodness, they love to be sprayed. And so does um, the cows, both the cows. And um, unfortunately, Rio and Georgia Lee do not like to be sprayed. I'm not sure what is behind that. I don't know if they just have never been sprayed before, but they haven't liked it since day one. And we can't leave our boyfriend. He definitely needs spraying. Shane's out here working with the skid steer, uh, helping our driveway because our, you know, we're not on level property. And a lot of times when it rains, it makes big gushes in our driveway going down to the creek. So he's out there fixing that if you hear beep, beep, beep. But today I wanna to share with you a story. I would say two, three, maybe a month ago, I got a phone call asking me to rescue some ducklings. Sometimes when I get calls for rescues, I think I can't get any more animals. Like I'll help you find a home for them, but I can't just keep getting animals. You know, I don't have a big enough spot, space and I have to look about the longevity of the animal's life and am I gonna be able to take care of them the rest of their life? So I told her she lived in the city and there is a pond in her neighborhood, which happens so often and people dump ducks. You know, I'm a big advocate for ducks being, being rescued because of situations like this. Well, this particular duck had been at this pond for 10 years. They named her Dolly. Well, Dolly often had little ducklings um, throughout the year and the whole neighborhood got to watch. Dolly was a perfect mom. She always, you know, would take care of the baby. Sometimes she would hatch them in people's gardens and stuff. Well, she hatched out nine babies. Everyone was so excited. And the next day, Dolly was missing. And her nine ducklings were out there all alone. So this particular lady that called me, her name is Linda. Linda called me and there were a lot of turtles in that lake. And she was witnessing the ducklings going under water as the snapping turtles would grab them. And she went to battle. So this is what happened. She got her fishing net and she went out there and she tried to rescue them because she's known in the neighborhood as the duck person because <laughs> she's always out there feeding the ducks and taking care of them. Well, she was only able to capture two little ducklings. Needless to say, Linda found herself taking care of these ducklings and raising them. Well, she knew after three weeks that she, she couldn't keep them a long time because she, she didn't have the space for ducks. So that's where she called me. And so I told her that I would take the ducklings and I would rescue them. Um, the ducklings came to me today and the woman was in tears. Those are her babies. Like she's been hand feeding them for three weeks and taking care of them 24 seven for three weeks. So these are her babies. So she named one of the ducklings after the duckling's mom, Dolly. And she named the other one, Daffy, Daffy, Daffy and Dolly. I'm not sure of the sex right now. I'm hoping they're both females so that I can keep them. But I told her, I said, if there's a male, there's a chance that I'm not gonna be able to keep it because majority of my ducks are injured and I can't have them overbred by having too many males in my flock. She understood, but the little ducklings went into the rescue tonight and they seem to be great.